So, just a quick one today. Seems how nothing crazy has happened this year. It's, uh, late January now. It seems I might actually be able to do the GDMBR. And it's occurred to me that I've only got five months to prepare. So uh, this is a bit of a training ride. So I thought I'd film it. Just a small video. If you don't know what the GDMBR is, it's the Great Divide Mountain Bike Group. And it's a mainly off-road trail that runs from Canada all the way down to the Mexico border. So it starts in a place called Banff and it runs through, let me think, Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, and New Mexico. Goes through three national parks, Glacier National Park, Yellowstone National Park, and the Grand Tetons. So, if all of that's correct, then my memory is better than I thought. I also thought it might be a good idea, even though I touched on my new bike in a previous video, maybe go into a bit more detail and explain why I got it and why I chose it for this route. So it's gonna be a little bit bike heavy, this video, but you should still watch it all the way through. You'd better watch it all the way through. So here is my Sonder Broken Road Pinion. I know you've seen it before, but uh, I've put some miles on this now. So I've got a bit, of a, bit more of an idea of uh, how it's gonna work out and I'm really pleased with it. It seems to do everything I want it to do. And uh, it's way better than any bike I've ever had. Um, really, really pleased. The Pinion gearbox, this thing is amazing. It has a 600% gear ratio with a 17% um, step between gears, which uh, no overlap. So it's it just is so efficient, it's so easy. You can never be in the wrong gear. And in the lowest gear, you know, you could climb up a vertical wall if you had the grip. Really, really good. So I'm very happy with that. When I first wanted to buy the bike, I was, um, I knew that I wanted the pinion gearbox. So uh, that was my first, uh, requirement when I was looking for different brands and manufacturers and uh, I came up with two or three um, I think it was Two Terrain which is a French company or German company I think um, Priority which are American um, they uh, make a bike uh, an aluminium frame bike with the pinion gearbox uh, Two Terrain is a steel bike and then I, I come across the Sonder, which is titanium, they're all about the same price. So for a titanium frame bike, this was very, very, um, very competitive. And uh, I did scrutinize everything when I came here. You can see all the welds, everything are flawless. I mean, it's absolutely beautifully done. So I was a little bit worried, um, if I'm honest, thinking there's gotta be a reason why things are cheaper sometimes, but I just think they've they've just done something right here, I'm not sure. And, you know, it's cheaper because it's in the UK, um, as opposed to having to get uh, a bike ship from the States with the duty and all that kind of stuff. So yes, this gearbox is fantastic. Completely sealed every 10,000 miles, 
you need to um, change the oil. And that's not a tricky job by all accounts. So there's no maintenance at all. The drive, the no chain, it's a belt. This is the Gates carbon belt drive. So it's uh, got a carbon weave inside. This will last, they say three to four times longer than a chain and you don't need to oil it. There's none of that. So this is as maintenance free as a bike can be, as far as I can tell. Um, which is exactly what I want for doing this GDMBR. I don't want to be focusing on trying to keep keep the bike uh, running. I know some people like all that, and I get it, but that's not me. I just want to get on it and ride. Um, derailers do my head in. They're, they're always, you're knocking them, they get bent, and then they're out of line, and you're trying to adjust them, and you've got little screwdrivers and all that stuff. I just can't be bothered. I'm not a purist in any way. I wouldn't really class myself as a cyclist other than I, I just like riding, so I'm not, not an enthusiast. So anyway, that's the, the um, belt drive. Um, it's got 27 and a half inch wheels. I went for them because I can put three inch tires on here, uh, which I don't have on, strangely, because they didn't have any when I ordered the bike. It has 2.6 inch tires, 2.6, yeah. and. I think I'm going to leave them on. I, I'm, not, I'm definitely not going to change them just uh, whilst these have got life in them. So I'm going to use them. Um, there's plenty of um, movement in the tyres um, and I haven't got front suspension. I, I went that way on purpose, again, for ease of maintenance. I didn't want um, to rebuild the forks in the middle of this trip. I did, I, so I wanted simple and that was why I went with 27 and a half inch wheels because the three inch tires if I do put them on there's plenty of movement in those so they act as suspension um, but as I said 2.6 inch ones I don't think I'm going to need the three inch it's very very soft the ride so I'm very happy with that combine that with this seat post which is probably the greatest purchase of my entire life this is a little polymer squidgy thing and it just absorbs any of those really bad um, serious uh, potholes things like that you know the ones that really really you feel that makes a big difference um, that is what was that now I can never remember the name of anything the EE -E silk uh, I've actually got notes here look I won't I won't lie I won't lie to you so let's see what it was EE Silk Plus, um, the aluminium version. It's got the five number five polymer, which is the, the, the one it comes with. I'm not going to mess with that. I mean, that's a really, really nice um, way of, I don't know, on long rides, that's definitely going to help. Um, I, I wouldn't be without it now. I just wouldn't. I can't imagine riding a bike without one. So, yeah, I really, really love that. What else have we got? The forks. Here we go. These are the Whiskey number no. 9 uh, carbon forks. I, I wouldn't really have gone with these. Um, I would have gone with cheaper ones had any been available. And these were the only ones I could get. So, uh, I mean, I'm not going to complain. I, I don't know, there's some movement in carbon forks again. So they absorb some of the big bumps and things like that. And these ones are supposed to be really good. I've got a Dynamo hub. Uh, the Sonda Juice. Um, you can route the cable internally here, but I haven't got round to it yet. But I've got this coming up into my... I don't know what this bag is called. I've got a K-Lite USB... Uh, what would you call that? Um, voltage regulator, I think they call them. So you can take the, the, the power from the hub and you can feed it into this and then you can charge two USB devices off that. And it works, it does charge my power bank. It's not super efficient, but you don't need it to be. I just need to top up between uh, stops when I'm on the, the ride. I think pretty much every day I'm gonna be able to find some sort of um, power outlet so I can charge up. But I like the idea of being self-sufficient and uh, if I do wanna go two or three days between stops, I should be okay. So we've got that, the bars, Velo Orange crazy bars. Um, I love these because of the sweep 
the angle, um, I don't know if because I've got a wide angle lens on this, but you're really, it's, there's a nice rise to these. I do have the details. Um, so they're 780 mil wide. Uh, they got a 35 degree sweep, which is quite a, um, a severe sweep, but I really, really like it. And a 40 mil rise. So these are really, really nice. And with this, you know, you've got a different hand position there, um, which I really like. I do actually use it. Um, just, you know, every now and then just to change a position does help with uh, your wrists and things like that. These grips, the ESI foam grips, they're just dead cheap, but everyone recommends them. And yeah, they're nice. They really are nice, very plush. These are the, the chunky ones. So very happy with them. Uh, yeah, aside from things like the, the rack, which I'm probably going to do a different video talking about the bags and the, and the accessories and, you know, all this sort of stuff. Maybe this will even become part of a little series. Who knows? I could have a playlist. That'll make me feel like I've arrived. Yeah, I'll probably do another video talking about the bags and, and what I have. So in general, what do I think? I, I love it. I'm really happy. Really, really happy with this bike. It's super light. The titanium frame is beautifully made. Um, the whole logic behind titanium, as far as I know, not being an expert, you've got titanium, aluminium and steel. Steel apparently gives and gives you a nicer ride. Aluminium is very rigid, but cheaper and lighter. Titanium is light like aluminium and has the flex like steel so apparently it's the best all-rounder i it was just the right one for me i was limited when i wanted a pinion gearbox this was the only one that i could get so the reason i have a titanium frame is because i had to essentially but i'm not going to moan about it it is pretty cool what else have i got on here i think that's about it i said this was going to be a short video it may be longer than I thought and if you're not into bikes then you're thoroughly bored and if you're thoroughly bored you probably clicked off doesn't matter this is my channel that sounded bitter didn't it I didn't mean it anyway I'm gonna ride now I'm gonna head off I was gonna make a coffee and uh, I might still who knows I don't need to get back yet in fact yeah why not I've got a little kettle and my tranja I was going to try making cowboy coffee. So, yeah, let's do that. I never made cowboy coffee. But I've watched people do it. It's kind of a theme of my channel. But I'm curious as to whether this is any good. I'm also curious as to whether it's all going to tip over because this isn't flat. That goes on there. Oh, he didn't bring a lighter, or did I? <sighs> I didn't bring a lighter and I got no means of starting a fire. I am so professional. Ah, oh, well, never mind. I'll just put all this away and then go home and make a coffee. I'm only about five minutes away. I just wanted to see what it was like next time. At least I don't hide anything. Right, I'm gonna pack up and then head back. So, I'm off. Um, I think I probably will do another video about the bags. I'm using and the rack and possibly the gear that I'm going to take. Um, I have a lot of stuff from when I hiked the Appalachian Trail uh, so I don't need an awful lot of stuff but I can supplement it. I don't have to be quite so crazy when it comes to weight. 
So, uh, yeah, I'm going to look into that and um, discuss that a bit more as well. Also, the logistics are getting to and from uh, Banff. Um, I think it's 90 miles from Calgary Airport, so I can fly directly into uh, Calgary and then um, get a transfer. There's lots of companies doing that, so I should be fine. God, I'm going uphill. This is why I need to do plenty of train training rides. I'm pretty out of shape. Now I'm going downhill so I can actually talk to the camera without risk of passing out and falling off. So yes, I'm not going to worry about coming home. Maybe Denver. I'll, I'll look into it briefly. But uh, yeah, I'll figure out when I'm there. When I fly to Calgary, I'll probably go to Banff, uh, find a hotel, stay there for a couple of nights just to get rid of the jet lag. I'm really excited about this. It's going to be an awesome trip. And I'm planning on going in July, beginning of July. And I've given myself July and August to complete it, which should be plenty of time. But I really don't want to be rushing it. Um, I'm going to film the whole thing. So uh, if you're interested in that sort of thing, then uh, maybe subscribe and follow along. And if you're also interested in, like I say, the gear that I'm going to take and the decisions around how I select it and all that kind of stuff, you probably want to subscribe as well. Um, one last thing. Um, the saddle, I did mention it. Um, this one seems okay, but I wouldn't mind doing that thing where you can measure your saddle bone and all that, your seat bone. I don't know whether that's just... I'm not sure if it's just a marketing thing, whether it actually is worthwhile. So if anyone's got any opinions on that, can you just let me know. Send me a message or leave a comment. Also, Brook Saddles, I've been looking at them. And again, I don't know whether it's just... I don't know whether they're any good, whether they're worth it, whether it's just something that people get just because they're supposed to be the best. Leave me a comment if you know anything about it. And uh, thanks for watching. You might see me again. You definitely will. Because I'm uh, filming a video tomorrow night as well. So that'll be coming out soon. Bye.